Hi, I'm Otto Pensler, uh, talking to you from the mysterious bookshop in Tribeca in Manhattan. And uh, today we're going to talk about one of my favorite writers. Uh, I, I know I say this often because I do have a lot of favorite writers, but uh, Charles McCary is uh, the greatest espionage writer that America ever produced. Um, there are some other very, very good writers like Alan First and, uh, and uh, Daniel Silva and so on, but the, the truly great one, the man who uh, has been compared to John Le Carre for 40 years, um, he is, the reviews constantly say, is the American John Le Carre. And uh, after a while, uh, McCary said, I just don't want to see that in a review anymore. <laughs> it's just, it is really tiresome. Um, and it's true. Uh, the, the great difference, I and mean, Le Carre, I think, is the greatest espionage writer that Britain ever produced uh, in a world that had Eric Ambler, Somerset Maugham, Graham Greene. Uh, I think the early John Le Carre was the greatest fiction ever produced in the espionage world in England. Uh, both of them, both Le Carre and McCary, are poets. Their, their, their prose, uh, the lyricism of their writing is unmatched by any other writer. The major difference between Le Carre and uh, McCary as uh, P.J. O'Rourke put it with McCary, uh, McCary knows right from wrong, unlike Le Carre. Uh, the moral equivalency of Le Carre's books, where they're the, the bad guys, the Soviets in, in his early books, uh, uh, are treated as the same as the American CIA or other spies are in terms of, uh, well, they're just on the other side but uh, they, they're treated the same way, which is not exactly what uh, a lot of people would think is the appropriate thing to do. Uh, McCary was a CIA agent, just as uh, Le Carre worked for uh, MI6. Uh, McCary worked for the CIA as a deep cover agent for more than a decade. And uh, he resigned from the CIA and um, became an editor at large of National Ge Geographic and did a lot of other things and then and wrote some nonfiction, wrote a biography of Ralph Nader. Uh, he ghosted Alexander Haig's biography and Donald Reagan's uh, autobiography and, uh, and then and was writing espionage fiction based on his experiences to some degree. He had a, a weird thing when he, when he uh, re resigned from CIA, he wrote a full-length uh, book about everything that he knew from his years in the CIA. Uh, wrote it carefully, annotated it, uh, corrected it, edited it, and when he was all done, he burned it. He said, now I'm free to write fiction without being stuck with the actual facts, although he has been praised relentlessly for the authenticity of his work. His first book is The Mirnik Dossier. Uh, it introduces Paul Christopher, his series character, who doesn't appear in every book, but he appears in, in most of, uh, of Charles McCary's books. Um, the Mirnik Dossier is, uh, it's a masterpiece done in um, dossier form. Uh, the whole book is done in letters, uh, in, uh, in files, in reports, and so on, rather than a single uh, straightforward narrative. Very hard to pull off. And uh, who's, bang is, who's banging on the door? Well, just ignore me. Yeah, I don't see anybody. We're doing a show here, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Hang on. No. I'm not supposed to come at this time of the day. I'm, I'm on a show, live, a live TV show. Four people today. Yeah.
So where we where were we before the pounding on the door? Um, this is uh, his first book. It has a rare band around. It. This is a perfect copy, uh, as you can see. This is from Saturday Review Press. Um, the the uh, the band is is a bonus, and you see it's a great quote from Eric Ambler. This is the most intelligent and enthralling piece of work I have read for a very long time. For his very first book, he got tremendous uh, response. Uh, it's because of the condition. It's a very fragile jacket. It, uh, it, it, the, uh, the spine frequently suns. Uh, I'll show you how to tell a first edition. I think the Mirnik dossier only had one printing. Um, and as I showed you with Casey Constantine, who was also published by Saturday Review Press, uh, they, there is no indication of first printing or later printing on, on the copyright page. Uh, by the way, this is $375 because of the condition and the scarcity. It did not have a very large print run. I have another copy, but as you can see, the spine is sunned. It's lightened. It, it's not quite the same condition, so it's 125 Condition, condition, condition is uh, one of the most important things that you can pay attention to when you're collecting. Uh, and it is, by the way, still in print and paperback. It's uh, a, a lot of his books have gone out of print. Uh, they've been reissued several times, but then they go out of print and, uh, and sometimes come back and sometimes don't. Uh, his... Next book, his, his second book, was The Tears of Autumn. I don't have a copy, unfortunately. I sell it every time I get it immediately. Uh, it was his big uh, bestseller, and it is his uh, take on the Kennedy assassination. And I'll tell you, when you read that book, you will close the last page and say, oh, that's what happened. It is so believable. It is so perfectly constructed that you will be absolutely certain that it's it's what really happened. So uh, I, I got to know uh, Charles McCary very well over the course of many, many years. I met him at, uh, at a club in Washington, D.C. Uh, that he said, oh, I want to take you here. And we went to this club and he said, if you look around the room, you'll see it's filled with politicians and spies, <laughs> which I thought was, how cool is that, you know? Um, and I was trying to buy him, uh, to buy his books. I wanted to publish him because I admired the work so much. And he kept talking me out of it. He said, no, 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 don't do that. They pay me so much money to write these books. I never earn out. You would lose money if you published me. So for years, I said, well, how about now? And he said, no, they still pay me too much. <laughs> so, um, so after the, uh, the Tears of Autumn, he wrote The Secret Lovers. And I said, wait a minute, how do you pronounce this? Is it The Secret Lovers or is it The Secret Lovers? And when you read the book, it doesn't answer the question. And he wouldn't answer the question either. He said, you get to decide. So this is um, The Secret Lovers. This is his third book. Now, by now, he's moved to Dutton. Um, it's a bigger, much bigger uh, publishing company than the uh, Saturday Review Press. And uh, on the copyright page, like most publishers, uh, as I've discussed many, many times, you tell a first edition by seeing the number sequence that goes down all the way to number one. Um, this is $65. It's not a perfect copy. It's got a tiny tear up here. It's got a little soiling at the top edge. So it's, it would be double that uh, if it were perfect, but it's not. Uh, the Last Supper is, um, is I, I don't know how to say this exactly. It may be 
I think The Tears of Autumn is the greatest espionage novel ever written by an American. Uh, and there are plenty of review, reviewers who agree with me about that. Uh, there's something about The Last Supper that, uh, that is almost as compelling. Uh, and it really brings uh, all of the previous work together. And, you, and it, it helps. This is the only book of his where it helps to have read the earlier books. It, you can read it without knowing anything else, uh, and it holds up as a, as a standalone book, but it's enhanced if you actually know the family history a little bit better. Uh, this is a pretty big book, and it, uh, it had a very big print run because of the success of The Tears of Autumn, uh, and because Dutton was now uh, trying to make him a bestseller. So the format is larger than the other books. You can see um, that he's moved up in, in size to a bigger book. And uh, because of the larger print run, it's, uh, it's not terribly expensive. Um, it's $40. And you can see again, Dutton shows first edition and then the number sequence that goes down to number one. The Better Angels is a remarkable book. I mean, they're all remarkable in their own, in each in a, mostly in a different way, but this one uh, tells the future in a way that is astonishing. Uh, he, this is, just to put in perspective the time uh, or the year, it's 1979, if I remember correct. Yes, it is, 1979. In it, he predicts or uh, prophesizes uh, that terrorists will use a full uh, a, a passenger plane filled with passengers to launch a terrorist attack against a building in America. This is 20 years before the... Uh, the bombing of the World Trade Center and the Pentagon in America. Um, he uses the term um, enhanced uh, questioning, is it? No, advanced, enhanced, well, it, it's a, the euphemism that we use for torture. It's used for the uh, in, enhanced interrogation. He uses it for the first time in this book. Um, he uh, also predicts that um, terrorists will attach bombs to themselves and go into public places uh, and blow themselves up to go. This did not happen before 1979. It happened later. So it's a, a remarkable book in many ways. Um, this is a beautiful copy. Uh, again, it's, it's E.P. Dutton. Again, the first edition shows the number sequence uh, down to, to, to the number one. And this is, at 75, it's, it's a little more expensive because of a black jacket. Uh, it is always, there's always wear up there. You see the white here, that's from the brodart, that's from the plastic cover underneath, but the book is in perfect condition, which it seldom is. It, it, the black shows is the most fragile color for a dust jacket because it shows any little wear at all and then it has white showing through it, and it, it uh, doesn't look like a fine copy, but this is a perfect copy, $75. Um, and here's the, the reprint of this, in which, you, as you can see, it says, the prophetic bestseller, which it is. When was it reprinted? This was reprinted... Uh, I overlook, I don't usually remember reprints very well, uh, 2008. Hmm. And uh, filled with great quotes on the back from every place. Uh, Charles McCary is the best spy novelist writing today, the Miami Herald, and, you know. The Old Boys, it's... Um, Paul Christopher in his old his series character in his uh, dotage, and uh, Robin Winks in the Boston Globe said that he's the best writer of intelligence and political novels in the world. Uh, just just saying. <laughs> uh, 
Um, in between, uh, so this is another spy thriller and uh, Overlook. This is an original book from Overlook, not, uh, not published, not a reprint. And they, like the other uh, publishers of Contemporary Times, shows the number sequence down to, uh, to number one. Um, he also wrote some non-mysteries, um, uh, political books that were very highly praised. And one of them is uh, uh, titled Lucky Bastard. And uh, the reviews came out, and it was about a, a president of the United States who um, was uh, behaving badly with women uh, on a regular basis. And every clever reviewer said, ah, this is Charles McCarry's take on, on Bill Clinton. And um, I, I was talking to him about it, and I said, uh, so how did you get this done so quickly during Clinton's presidency? He said, oh, I wrote it about John Kennedy. Um, I finally got to publish Charles McCarry, and I did it with the, the Shanghai Factor. Now he's moved on from the, the Soviets being the great enemy of America, and in this book he points out how, in fact, China is America's greatest enemy. And uh, he, uh, he wrote about this gigantic Chinese company that uh, has infiltrated with their equipment into the United States, into machines and uh, uh, technology uh, that we produce in America using some of their material. And turns out uh, about a year and a half later, uh, CBS uh, uh, 20 minutes, uh, uh, 60 minutes pointed out this, uh, the name of the company just skips my mind again because so many things do. Uh, this big Chinese company that um, America is trying not to use anymore because they have been stealing so many uh, military and industrial secrets through this large company. But he anticipated that in the Shanghai Factor. Um, here's the British edition of, uh, of the Shanghai Factor in which uh, Lee Child says, Charles McCary is better than John le Carré which makes him perhaps the best ever. Uh, this is a mysterious, by the way, uh, this is a mysterious press book. And as I've mentioned many times, oh, this is a signed copy. Oh, we don't have, he didn't sign a lot of books. Um, we never make a secret of what our first editions are. So you can see on the title page, there's all the information you'd need to know that it's a first edition. And uh, it's still in print, in paperback, happy to say. He wrote one more book, The Mulberry Bush. Um, he died at the age of 88. In the years that I came to know him, he was the most intimidating intelligence uh, of anybody that I've ever known. I was uh, nervous even though we became good friends as the years went by, I was always nervous because I always thought he knew everything in the world. Thanks for watching.